welcome to the third video in our Revenue Management Principles series, brought to you in collaboration with the Expedia Group. If you haven't already seen the previous two releases of content on this series, where we discuss Revenue Management Principles, make sure to check that out. You don't necessarily need to have watched the first two videos to follow what we're going to discuss in this video. However, it is a good idea if you would like to be aligned with the flow of content as it is released. We'll leave the links in the description if you'd like to jump across to those videos first before watching this one. Also, make sure that you read the article again that was written by the amazing Vikram Singh in support of this video and the podcast and topic. And we've also got Monica Zereb, who is the Chief Revenue Officer at Lowe's Hotels and who has tremendous knowledge and understanding of the entire revenue management topic, joining us for this video again with, uh, of course, Chris Benevitz from the Expedia Group. And Monica, Chris and Vikram will all come together to discuss the finer details of this topic when we do the podcast. So make sure you check that out. And don't forget, of course, the infographic in support of this particular topic, benchmarking, and will also, that will also be available. So make sure you check that out too. Okay, so let's get into it. Hotel benchmarking is about assessing and comparing your hotel's performance with the industry's players and of course your competitors. The reason hotels do this is to determine where they stand within their marketplace and how they can improve their overall business. Ever since hotels started leveraging data to elevate their businesses, they've also gained exposure to a number of other elements and benchmarking is certainly one of them. Initially, it wasn't really a must have for hotels, but with time and increasing competition, benchmarking has become a very important element. So what really is benchmarking and how can hotels leverage it? Well, first of all, hotels, yes, they should feel content when they've had profitable months. But from a business perspective, it's also very important to look towards a bigger picture. To compete in today's constantly evolving market, hotels need to get involved in the process before they start to see the real benefits of benchmarking. The big hotel brands and change are very, uh, chains are very good examples of successful benchmarking because they keep on evaluating their properties whenever they need to and they of course make the necessary operational changes. Small and medium sized hotels can also benefit by applying some very simple processes and we'll go over some of those today. So let's go to Monica and Chris now and hear more from them. Many years ago, when I worked on property as a director of revenue management, I would see the general manager and, you know, make some comments like, oh, didn't we do so great this weekend? And his response would be compared to what? And that's still a lesson that uh, that I remember to this day. And I think it's it's kind of relevant to, to this conversation. Um, you know, benchmarking is is so important because it really allows you to identify areas of improvement to ensure that your hotel is keeping up with the growth and success of other hotels that you deem as appropriate competitors. Um, by assessing what other hotels are doing successfully, you can develop a plan to boost your performance and take advantage of any opportunities in your market. In addition, uh, benchmarking allows you to track your performance against internal key success metrics and expectations like your budget, your forecast, and of course, comparing yourself to your previous results. Knowing what good performance looks like uh, over the past years has really become um, an increasingly challenging aspect of, of doing revenue management. In the past, this was easier because traveler behavior was more predictable, but that hasn't been the case in recent years. So really, when you think about this, you know, what can you do? And I think building the framework to track your own internal performance is a great place to start. And, and this can involve uh, building reporting so that you can track your booking pickup and your booking pace. Your booking pickup is really telling you how many rooms has your property gained over a specific period of time, such as since yesterday, and what rates did those bookings come in at. By using this type of reporting on a consistent basis, you're going to be able to spot trends such as which dates are picking up faster or slower and which dates are travelers willing to pay more. 
And this gives you some strong signals on when you might need to adjust your approach. Your booking pace report, on the other hand, is used to compare your current performance to your expected performance, such as your forecast or your budget. By tracking your performance in this way, you're going to see how you're tracking towards your goals. And if you start to see a noticeable gap emerge, it'll tell you that it's a good time to think about changing your approach. And really another way to know when to adjust is by comparing your own hotel performance against the performance of the overall market. And there's some free tools out there that will provide proje uh, projections and predictions on the current market occupancy levels for the entire market. And this can be really helpful because it allows you to compare your own performance versus the overall market performance. If you're ahead or behind, um, you know, there's different levers and different actions you can take. Um, and this is a really good insight that can help inform your strategy. And to that last point, I just think it's really important to, to seek out those market level insights. If you only measure your performance against yourself, you don't necessarily know the full potential of what's out there. Um, to that point, another great piece of data you can look at is traveler search demand. By tracking uh, how travelers are searching, you'll know which dates are the hottest, which dates are slowest. Um, it's really going to inform you of the potential travelers out there that you can attract to your hotel. And it's a, it's a really meaningful and helpful insight to inform some of your decisions. So if you're ready to take it a step further than that, something else you could look at is conversion rate of your bookings. Basically, this is telling you, um, you know, the percentage of travelers that end up booking after they're, they looked at your property. Um, and typically, this is, is data that you can get from your distribution partners. So if your conversion rate is underperforming versus the competition, it could be a good, um, you know, indicator um, to, to dive into that and see what's causing it. And then really just look at what guests are telling you, right, through, through guest reviews. Are a lot of guests telling you that you're offering great value and it's too good to pass up? Is the opposite happening and, and guests are telling you that really your, your price maybe is, is too much for, for what they're getting? Um, those learnings that you can get directly from guests are really important um, to help you know when it's time to adjust and adapt. And overall, it's, it's really just being ready to do that, right? Being ready to adjust and adapt. Uh, traveler demand changes. Um, and if you're ready to react, you're going to be uh, in a great position for success. So first of all, I would say keep your own accurate records, right? Focus on a few items and track them really, really well. Um, you can start with uh, occupancy, average rate, uh, rev par, um, room revenue. I think those are good, very basic things that everyone has access to. Then I would say, um, if you're gonna be benchmarking against other hotels, you should choose your competitors wisely, right? So you should think about uh, your hotel's segment and customer mix. Um, as an example, if, if you're a small hotel with no meeting space, maybe you should think twice before choosing a hotel in your comp set that does uh, large groups or has meeting space. Try to choose hotels that are similar to you in size, location, uh, segment and customer mix, and amenities. Um, one way that uh, we've always thought about it is um, if your hotel was sold out, where would your regular guests go and stay? And likely that is one of your true competitors. And lastly, I would say um, set up a process, right? So likely in Excel, because that's something I think revenue managers are very comfortable with but somewhere where you can regularly track what's happening in the market, right? How often are rates changing in the market? Do they change a week out? Do they change a month out? Um, what are they like six months out? Um, are your competitor hotels charging higher or lower than normal? And really you can only establish the normal by again, tracking what they're doing. Um, I think probably the best example is weekday and weekend rates, right? The differential between those rates can really help you to, to determine 
what the different type of demand uh, is there in your competitive set and ensure that you're also um, getting your fair share. So there are several practices really that any hotel can take to be in a position where they can start to anticipate where the competition will end up going with their rates. And I think a great way to start is by tracking the pricing behavior of competitors. And this might sound obvious, but to get to a place where you can anticipate what might happen next, you need to take a, a consistent, dedicated approach. And as you get into a habit of this over time, you'll then be able to spot trends. And this really starts by having a relevant competitive set to compare your own property against. When assessing who should be in your competitive set, think of it from the lens of the traveler. Figure out which properties travelers are, are actually comparing you against. And once you have that competitive set, you'll want to learn as much as you can about the business of each of your competitors, uh, such as what's making their property unique. Is it location, services, amenity, overall quality? How are they positioning and messaging their product uh, to attract travelers? By knowing those ins and outs, you'll understand what is influencing their rate strategy, and that's going to help you anticipate ahead. And when you're in the habit of tracking competitors' rates consistently, you'll start picking up on other key information about their approach. So, for instance, are certain competitors consistently lowering their prices a couple days before arrival? If you know that this might happen, you're going to be prepared for the moment that it actually does happen, and that helps you control the impact that it could have on the performance of your own business. And really, when tracking competitor pricing, you also want to watch how the rates are trending. Are you seeing that the competitors' rates are gradually increasing over the past week or the past two weeks? If so, this can be a really strong signal that your competitors are building up occupancy and they're likely to then maintain or keep growing their rate. Um, and then another thing is really just knowing which of your competitors are leaders and which are followers. When you adjust your prices, do you see certain hotels follow your behavior? If that's happening, really what that means is it's, it's making it potentially harder for your business to stand out. So if you can anticipate that happening, you'll know which price or marketing levers you can pull. And I think really the last item that I'll touch on here is just the importance of knowing your market dynamics. If you can anticipate where the market's heading, you can anticipate the moves of your competition as well. And this really just involves being a market expert. You'll wanna know the seasonal demand patterns of your area, which days of week typically are the strongest or which days have the least demand, um, and when are different types of travelers visiting. Remember that market dynamics change and they will continue to change. So you really need to stay on top of this data. Uh, but thankfully there's some great marketing intelligence resources out there. And really just to sum it all up, the practices you can take to anticipate what will happen next don't often require a lot of heavy lifting. But if you're short on time, there's some tools out there um, that can automatically inform you when competitors' rates are changing or market demand is changing as well um, that can help you stay informed. So really just go ahead, set up your approach. Um, don't do too much of that heavy lifting and, uh, and strive for consistency and, and you'll be in a, a really great position. So we've mentioned already occupancy, average rate, rough par. Uh, I think those are pretty standard for most hotels. Um, I would say if you have any food and beverage amenities, that is another source of revenue that can easily be tracked from your, from your profit and loss statements or your financial statements. And one good reason to track these is you also may have opportunities to influence pricing here. And you may also see trends as to, you know, when you have a certain type of customer or a certain type of demand, how does that Im impact your food and beverage performance? I would say if your hotel has different segments like group and transient, it's good to see how those change over time as you may want to increase or limit one or the other kind of depending on the demand in your market and what rates each of those segments will pay. 
Customer data is also available online through reviews, whether that's on Google, um, OTAs, um, and lots of other review sites probably relevant um, to your location. Um, and I would say compare your score to your competitors. How is it changing over time? Is it getting better? Uh, is it getting worse? What's your ranking like versus your competitors? And that can also have an impact on your pricing strategy. And how many reviews are you getting versus them, right? So what kind of feedback is really available? And actually, I believe the more reviews that people get may also indicate a certain level of demand, which gives you another um, data point to look at. So revenue managers were historically thought of as the number crunchers, uh, the people behind the scenes. Uh, and while those analytic analytical skills are, are super critical, um, leading an effective revenue strategy involves also being an outstanding communicator and a connector across the business. And when we think of the importance of measuring the efficiency of a revenue strategy, this communication piece is, is really so, uh, so important. An example of this is the role that a revenue manager plays in communicating the changes um, to the key internal and external business stakeholders. So some examples of that, uh, of changes that a revenue manager might want to communicate. Um, one is, is communicating when market demand shifts are happening, such as um, which dates are in higher or lower demand than what was expected. Um, another example is informing the team of when traveler behavior is changing. Um, so an example of this is, you know, maybe you have an advanced purchase rate that's available out there and you're not seeing a lot of movement on that. And that could be telling you that travelers are really seeking flexibility and they're, they're, they're not so interested in, in those uh, restrictive rates. What's important here, as you think of uh, the role of the revenue leader, is not to just be the communicator, but also to be proactively sharing your proposed approach to be successful given any changes that happen in the market or with the competition. Um, bring others into your vision so that they can validate it. Um, they can offer their own input and different perspectives as well. And, and really by creating spaces for those types of discussions amongst your team, you'll come away with a well-defined approach to overcome any challenges and, and gain market share. Ultimately, a revenue strategy um, can only be as successful, um, uh, you know, if the entire team is aligned, involved and, and committed. And as a revenue leader, you're really in a position to, to clearly communicate what the goals are for the business. So communicating those key metrics like ADR, occupancy, uh, RevPAR, communicating what your current forecast is um, and how that compares against your budget. Um, communicating all of those things, socializing the goals, um, and really empowering members across your team with specific in roles and responsibilities that will contribute to achieving those goals is, is what it's all about. When there's that alignment on the plan and the vision, um, great things can happen. And, and I think that's what's so great about revenue management is, is the role that, that revenue managers, revenue leaders play. Um, this critical role in, in being that communicator and connector um, to achieve the success for the business. Benchmarking in the hospitality industry isn't something new, and it should not be underestimated just how important it is for hotels to include into their operating strategies. Especially in today's market and times when hotels are investing more capital in setting up their teams and processes to get better at this particular topic. And with time, it is sure that this is going to become a very necessary aspect of the hotel industry overall. So for hotels to stay competitive and profitable, benchmarking is really going to be their power. Thanks for watching. This is the final video from the co-collaboration project we've done with the Expedia Group on revenue principles. We hope that you found this content informative and helpful when it comes to your own revenue management journeys. I'd like to make a special thank you to everyone that worked with us on this project, Vikram Singh, Monica Zereb, and Chris Benevitz. Their input and their knowledge has been tremendous in creating this content overall. And of course, thank you for your support. So until next time, it's bye for now.